Hello everybody, tis I the rumpled one. I went to a couple of public meetings last night and I'm going to make two videos. I was only planning on attending one, but when I got into Mayberry and I picked up the local paper there, there was another public meeting that I could attend. And this one was for the port of Mayberry. You see Mayberry's right there on the river and the uh, Pacific Ocean. And so we have a port, a port commission. Basically it's a taxing body that I have to, uh, since I own property, I have to pay taxes. And the port has a budget which then goes into the county and they compute my tax rate. So basically they take money from me. So since they take money from me, I got a vested interest in what they do. And so the meeting started at 5 o'clock, which I have a problem with that because most people usually work, you know, 8 to 5 jobs, 9 to 5. And so by the time people get there, the meet might be over. And I think they do that on purpose. And you see the port of Mayberry, it's kind of funny because, see, you got Mayberry and then another Mayberry. Okay, and these two towns are about 25 miles apart or so. I think actually they're a little bit closer. But the point is, anybody driving from Mayberry 2 to the meeting in Mayberry 1, I mean, they're not going to get there. And they, they rotate. So next month, if I want to go, i got to go over to Mayberry 2. But that's kind of besides the point. The thing is, the meeting shouldn't be until 6, maybe 6.30. So people who want to attend can attend. And there were six people there in the audience. Big, big attendance. Well, you see, the, the port of Mayberry, it's kind of funny. They have five elected officials. But they only have, the port only has three employees. Yet the port of Mayberry has its fingers and all these different pies that really have nothing to do with port. Now to me a port, when I think of port, what do I think of boats, ships, shipping, fishing. But there is no fishing industry really. Commercial fishermen? No, not, not many. No, the uh, the Mayberry fish plant closed down last century sometime. But the port still exists. For what reason? I don't know. Because when you think about it, what do we need a port for? There's no commercial fishing, really, to speak of. There's no shipping. So why do we need a port? You see, it's a dinosaur. It should be let to go extinct, but the port reinvents itself. It gets its fingers in these pies like urban renewal and all these other grants and matching funds. I mean, it's astronomical the amount of money that flows through this port that only has three employees. So last night, I guess they commissioned or chartered or hired this consulting company to do a strategic business plan. So I'm sitting there right in the front and I'm listening to these two guys pre present this strategic business plan. And all I hear is they're talking about money, they're talking about revenue, they're talking about leases. Everything's about money. And I'm listening. And I'm listening. Because they said that I guess they went out and they interviewed some people here, Mayberry citizens, about their feelings on the port. And I guess they let slip that I believe the, uh, the port commissioners or, or uh, manager gave them a list of people that they should talk to. I wasn't on that list. <laughs> I wonder why. I know why. So I sat there and I listened. And they talked about all these things about maybe taking this building and turn it into a hotel and taking this building, maybe building a building here and maybe bringing some have this for restaurants and maybe doing this, all this stuff, all about generating revenue. So I sat there and listened. And finally, 
Then the poor commissioners started adding their two cents. So we had to listen to that. And then finally, they said, well, should we get some public input now or wait till the end? They go, well, we can do it now. It's like, great. So, go, well, public, do you, do you have any input? So since I was sitting in front, I looked behind to see if anybody wanted to say anything. And nobody stood up. So I, I raised my hand and I started in on them. And I let them have it. And I told them, I said, I hear you guys talking about all this money, revenue, all this stuff. But not one word was talked about reducing the debt or burden on the taxpayers. And I just paused for a minute to let it sink in. And then I went on to say that, you know, that you guys keep raising the budget 6% a year. By law, in the state of Oregon, a taxing district can raise the budget by 6% a year without going to the voters. I said, do you know what happens to that budget in 12 years if you raise it 6% every year? And then I paused. And then the manager of the Port of Mayberry stepped in, oh, no, no, it's 3%. I'm like, if I'm not mistaken, unless something's changed, it's 6%. She's like, no, 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 it's 3%, always has been. Well, it's so nice to have a smartphone. The thing is, the meeting was held in the room in the library. Remember those videos I made about the, that room in the library that some people get to use for free? What was in that room? So I got on my smartphone and I downloaded the PDF from the state of Oregon that states what I claimed. And then later on I raised my hand again and corrected her. But I also told them, I said, you know what? You guys are talking about bringing in restaurants. You're the consultants. You're the ones that are supposed to be making the observations. Haven't you seen that most of the restaurants aren't open seven days a week? Do you think they want more restaurants here? And they're like, oh, good point. I mean, consultants. I just got finished reading the book, Anti-Fragile. And I'm like a kid with a new toy. Because this book has so many facts in it. It just shows you how wrong... The, the, these governments and consultants are. And one of the reasons is they have no skin in the game. These consultants can get up there and make their proposals and presentations and tell you this is what you're supposed to do. And if it doesn't work, well, guess what? They get their fee. They don't have to give the fee back. If it doesn't work, oh, well, sorry, oops. They have no skin in the game. See, back in the old days, if you were an architect and you built a bridge, you know what? You and your family had to live under that bridge for a certain period of time. Think about it. In other words, you better make sure that bridge you built is, is up there right. Otherwise, it's going to collapse on your head. And so that way, you only get to make that mistake once. But I guess that was barbaric. You see, the point is, when you got skin in the game, you take extra care. You're a little more careful. But when it's not your money and you're going to get your fee and you're going to fly in, give your presentation and fly out and what happens happens and it doesn't affect you down the road, you don't care. So anyway, I hit him with that. And there was a lot more I could hit him with, but I, I didn't want to use all my ammunition in one shot. But it just goes to show how these government entities that are dinosaurs that should be just just decommissioned they'll do whatever they can to stay in power to stay in control and I pointed out I said you know like this book that I just read trees might grow to a couple hundred years old but then they die there's nothing in nature that's suggest that anything goes on forever. Nothing. Nothing that lives, lives forever. Nothing that comes to be, stays forever. We all know the sun is going to either implode or explode, collapse upon itself billions of years from now. It's inevitable. Nothing goes on forever. But these government agencies 
will do whatever they can once they get their foothold to survive. And they, the thing is, it's either grow or die. These, this little three-person port just, just keeps growing and getting all these grants and other money and federal funds and matching funds and, and who knows what all else. For what reason? What, what purpose are they serving? Why is government competing with local business? Why should, if government's a landlord, they're competing with private industry, the private landlords. When there's plenty of places for rent. Do we need more? See, what, did it, what are these consultants thinking of? What are they thinking? Are they thinking? I mean, what good is a consultant? A consultant will say, you want to know what time it is? Here, show me your watch. Oh, yeah. They'll use your watch to tell you what time it is. You don't need no consultants. In fact, I'm going to find out how much these guys were paid, whose decision it was to pay them, and, who, and whose money did they get paid with. Because this is infuriating to me that this goes on. And then, but the people are buffaloed. Oh, the Port of Mayberry, they do such good. Look at this nice river walk. Look at this. Who cares? What good does it do? Oh, it's nice to look at. So what? If all these things are so great, these ideas are so good, let private industry do them. Because otherwise, and it's just going to be, you know, on the, a burden to the taxpayers. You know, we got people in this area here in Mayberry that are starving. We got people that need medical attention. We got people here that need roofs over their head. You know, we don't need more river walks. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, now I know this has turned into a rant. But the point is, is that this is the kind of stuff that goes on in local government. And the problem is, is that we the people, or should I say sheeple, or idiots, keep putting these same people back in. Because anytime somebody new runs against them, the good old boys, they'll do whatever they can to keep control. Wake up, America. Wake up, Mayberry. Smell the tyranny.